I mean, that should be getting both of us. Yeah. I would think. Why don't you get it? God, I would hope so. Okay. Oh, okay. Day two. Do, do. So this day was filled with exploration and panos as we drove many paved and unpaved roads in the Flint Hills. <laughs> yes, there will be photography. Give me a little bit to get there. I want to show you some of the landscapes that we saw from the truck as we went through the rolling hills of the Flint Hills in search of monuments and photography opportunities for now and for later. Sit back, relax, and unwind. So, <laughs> we uh, went down a road that had a historical marker sign, and uh, the road has slowly turned into just two gravel tracks wide enough for my tires. We think we saw the monument up on the hill, but there's no way to literally get there. And I think I might see a place to turn around finally. Yeah. So, I'll show you some of this fun road. This is the fun of exploring in rural Kansas, though. So. Absolutely. All right. That's a road. That's a road. Don't go do that, down that when it's raining. Okay, I'm gonna go. We'll go back the way we can because I know what that is. Welcome to day two of us being down in the Flint Hills area of Kansas this morning, well, this afternoon actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we are headed over to the Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve, which is part of the National Park System and is on Kansas Scenic Byway 177, I believe. If it's not 177, I will correct it yes. somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. So this is our second full day down here exploring and doing a little bit of photography. Uh, kind of our recon trip for future trip or trip to the area to do more concentration on the photography. This way we know where things are, um, how long it takes to get to places, and if there's other places that we might want to stay that might be closer to what we want to photograph. That's what this trip is all about. So let's see what we find that might make for a good evening photograph session tonight and for future photography trips down the road. So Shelly and I did a lot of driving that day. We also spent quite a bit of time at the Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve, which is part of the national park system. It's uh, got a lot of great hikes, which we didn't have time to do. Plus it was really hot and muggy that day. This first one's a multi-shot panoramic that I shot from looking out of the barn over the stockyards area. In fact, every image I believe that I'm going to show you today is a panoramic. Yeah, I went a little crazy. Plus, on top of that, I only had my 70 to 300 mil lens. Unfortunately, I forgot my 24 to 70 at home for this trip. So we do a lot of handheld panos in this. I didn't have a tripod with me. There was plenty of light to do these photographs. Here's the raw stitched image right here below. The top one is what I came away with after I did a little bit of processing in Lightroom. Let's talk about it. Have you ever shot uh, handheld panos in the field and how well did they turn out? I already tend to massively overlap my panoramics anyway for the frames as you saw when I showed them to you. So handheld's not that much different. Usually I'm not uh, perfectly level but I think this is a really nice shot. I love the clouds. You know, for the wrong time of day, I actually like this panoramic.
So my answer to how rocks would, are made would be a mommy rock and a daddy rock <laughs> spend some quality time together, <laughs> thus producing a baby rock. But I'm pretty sure that's totally wrong. Yes, exactly wrong. Yes. But it does take a lot of pressure <laughs> sometimes. So. We're driving around the uh, Tall Grass Prairies National Preserve in Kansas, and boy, is it hot and sticky. Whew. Not as hot as it could be. It's not 100. It's only 87-ish. So there's my incorrect answer. I'm sure Shelly will have a much better scientific answer. Oh, yeah. Depends on what rocks you're talking about, though, so. All right. So, yes, Shelly actually did some geosplaining, and that will come out in a future video. And I've been told not to geosplain ever again because I'm completely wrong. Here again, this is a handheld pano. This is multi-row and about 14 frames on each row. So I'm going to show you the first row. Here again, this is totally handheld. No tripod involved. And this is the second row that we're going to start layering in. Not everything's going to match up because I'm just trying to show you how many frames I use to complete the raw stitched panoramic. And it's just crazy how different they look. And you can see where, you know, I, I don't have quite as many frames in that second row, that upper row, as I did in the first row. Just stressing the point. It's handheld. So this is what it looks like when it's all stitched together. You see the white areas are areas where I didn't overshoot enough to get enough of the image that I was hoping for. I was hoping to have all of that tree on the left as well as all of the tree on the right. The main reason I had to do this is I was walking around with just the 70 to 300 mil lens that day and I wanted to get everything in one shot. I'm okay with the way this one turns out after it's stitched together, cropped down, and post-processed. It's not bad. I just really wish I had that full tree on the left. Let me know what you think of this one. Let's talk about it. Let's get a discussion going down there. So for my third and final photograph of the day, I wanted to show the height of this house, and here again, I only had the 70 to 300 to work with, so I had to do a handheld panoramic in the vertical, which was a little bit more difficult, as you can see here from how it's stitched together. It's kind of wacky. So of course, I'm going to take that into Lightroom, crop it, do a little bit of post-processing with it, and turn it into something much more appealing to the eye. I am really happy with the way this one turned out. I have rarely done vertical panoramics, and I've rarely, really, really, really rarely ever shot handheld vertical. It did turn out really well in my mind. What do you guys think? Let's get a discussion going down below. Handheld panos, you in, you out, you on the fence. You do need the right lighting conditions. So it was uh, quite the afternoon of exploring the Flint Hills and the Tall Grass Prairie National Preserve. Uh, we did some photography over there. We did. Not typically the time of day that you want, but it wasn't the worst light. We had some uh, nice fluffy Simpsons-like clouds floating through, so it, it helped a little bit. Yeah, So they were beautiful earlier earlier in the day. So, yeah, it wasn't yeah. too bad. Um, I did a lot of handheld, and I'm pretty sure by now I've explained everything to you that I did, <laughs> because um, mm. it was quite the effort on my part, because I just had my 70 to 300 on me, mm. and I wanted to shoot wider, so yeah. I'm pretty sure I gave you detail on how I did that mm. by now. So if you like what we're doing and you want to join in and hang out and, you know, follow along, hit the subscribe button down below. Ding the bell for notifications of when we release videos. Ding. Yeah. And if you haven't yet done so, please give us a big thumbs up. That really tells YouTube that uh, you like what we're doing and promotes it to uh, other people. Yep. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.